All right, well, let's get into some stock stories because we'll start with NVIDIA, which it's up marginally today. This month, it's gained around 20%. Year to date, we know this has been one of the hottest stocks up 234% mm -hmm. year to date. But there's a report today about its China-specific AI chip. What's happening? Yeah, really impressively bounced back already. The stock was down about $5 in the pre-market session on a Reuters report that it's one custom uh, China AI chip that it's been working on uh, to address some of those uh, regulatory issues and uh, geopolitical issues that we've seen between the U.S. and China, uh, which was slated to be, be released, I believe, this month. Uh, it was potentially as early as you know last week is actually going to be pushed back to the first quarter of next year. Now I find it quite interesting that you know we just we just heard from Nvidia on earnings mm -hmm. and we heard no mention of this, but no. uh, I don't think it's a surprise given that the one piece of that earnings report that really had sort of the skeptics of Nvidia's rally, the skeptics of Nvidia's trajectory clinging to was this China potential, sl the slowdown in its China business, which mm -hmm. is maybe not as important as it was in years past, but it's still a, a large chunk of its business. The thought was it's largely going to be offset by uh, its growth in sort of domestic AI uh, chips. But uh, finding out about this when there's already concerns about that, I don't think is perceived as a positive. But uh, as I said, maybe some of the other things that's going well for NVIDIA uh, allowing the market to shrug this off. But you did see a negative reaction uh, before the market opened. Buyers stepping in, though, here already five minutes into the trading session, buying shares up as it is up about a quarter of 1%. Uh, this is well executed by NVIDIA. You want this story out there. You don't want to withhold information, mm -hmm. but you'd much prefer it breaks uh, on that holiday shortened day after Thanksgiving yeah. than when the whole market is watching you during your earnings event. And then, you know, point of it being after earnings, right? Mm -hmm. Because Briefly, the CFO said that China sales and other affected destinations buy this U.S. chip restriction. Um, they bring in about 20 to 25 percent of data center revenue mm -hmm. f over the past quarters. But as you said, the company expects that to be more than offset by the growth in other regions. Did they give any intel on where their growth is? is coming from right now. I think we know. I don't think it's a secret. It's been yeah. AI, right? It's been the fact well, that they obviously. were the one that was uh, front and center, spotlights on them. I mean, this company has essentially went 4x its earnings uh, in one year. Mm -hmm. And we're not talking about a micro cap company. We're talking about a trillion dollar company at this right. point. Uh, unprecedented, really, by the amount of growth that they've had. Right. And so we still saw a pretty muted response, though, to the blowout earnings. Is this because of that outlook in China? I think it's because the bar and this has been a bar that NVIDIA has set itself is just unbelievably high, unprecedented uh, high marks expected and delivered by NVIDIA. But the fact that there was mention uh, of the, the China weakness uh, and the issues there, the fact now that you have a delay in, in the launch of this chip, you don't have much room for error here. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is essentially walking a, a, a perfect tightrope, and that might even just be to maintain the stock price. So uh, I would say, by and large, a move from 500 to 485 after this stock was like $112 last mm. year. If you're an investor in, in NVIDIA and you're mad about that, you yeah. gotta you gotta be happy sometimes with even small losses mm -hmm. being wins. Good point as well. You know, and and who knows if they're setting themselves up for a more difficult comparison next year. Oh, uh, un un undoubtedly. Undoubtedly, you know. So let's switch over to mm -hmm. Amazon though, because we have a little M and A activity happening in this stock. What is the latest? Yeah, they uh, had set out to buy uh, Roomba vacuums. Okay. Uh, the the iRobot is the parent company of of that firm. I think. They also have uh, mops as well. But essentially, uh, what is this company doing? Well, they have uh, you know, these smart vacuums that drive around your house, mm -hmm. and they map out that home. And they give you a pretty good idea of what the layout of the rooms are. You're mm -hmm. putting labels in. They know where your furniture is. And uh, this got the attention of some uh, antitrust uh, regulators. And um, hmm. looks like they're going to win, according to uh, those familiar with the matter. Three separate sources telling Reuters uh, they are set to win this. So this in the EU, at least, uh, which we know has been a little bit more uh, stringent alongside the UK at uh, actually uh, pushing some of these different acquisitions through. But this is a uh, 
maybe outside the box purchase for Amazon? You know, what do they need yeah, Roombas it is. for? For products like that, yeah. But what do they get? They get that data. They get that uh, map out of your room. Okay. And if they're targeting you ads, they got mm. a pretty good idea of what you might want based off what you have and what that layout is. So to me, this is one of those situations where they're not even necessarily buying the product. That product's almost a, a Trojan horse for the info mm. they're going to get. That is such a good point. I mean, we had this conversation about other companies that do not have advertising as their core business mm -hmm. heading into advertising like what may happen with United which I personally think if United doesn't do it somebody else is going to do it <laughs> no doubt and it's a, it's just increasingly a part of our world which is uh, the more information you have the better you're going to be able to deliver uh, potential ads mm -hmm. but if you're Amazon you're also selling the goods as well so yeah. you know not only are you potentially getting the products in front that uh, you know potential consumers may want mm -hmm. you're also getting a little bit of that purchase as well considering you're the one selling it to them absolutely and that is why it was up for antitrust scrutiny but finally Mizuho gave an analyst note out this morning on Microsoft it's benefiting from the Sam Altman open AI drama that really was the gift that kept on giving this week because it was such a slow news week. Yeah, I fully expect that this is like a reality TV show that's gonna <laughs> yeah. be on Bravo or something at this point. I can't yeah. even keep up with it, but uh, Sam Altman returning to the company um, instead of the, uh, I guess, the coup d'etat to take him mm -hmm. out, it's now a, a reverse coup d'etat where the, uh, the board uh, is mostly going to be replaced now. And uh, one of the points that I think Kevin Hanks was making as well as Tom White on Fast Market is uh, you know, in a way, Microsoft came out uh, a victor in either in either case because had uh, Sam Altman been ousted, he leaves, joins Microsoft for a new venture. Uh, they're going to have more kind of influence on that venture. Uh, maybe set back a little bit in terms of timetable. But in this version, where Sam Altman returns and the board is moved around. Microsoft maybe gets more influence through potential board seats and, and influence on those board seats. So it was sort of win-win for Microsoft. Uh, OpenAI, though, uh, obviously a huge part of the uh, optimism we've seen in Microsoft this year as a pretty uh, sizable shareholder in that uh, business that's been, of course, so robust with its chat GPT uh, software being really the uh, the mascot of AI this year, I would mm -hmm. say, the front and center piece of, uh, of AI. Mizuho now uh, did reiterate a buy rating with a 420 price target on this news, expecting that Microsoft partnership is gonna remain strong uh, and it's confident in Microsoft's uh, opportunities to grow over its medium and longer term uh, with basically all of this generative AI uh, you know, investment and research and mm -hmm. development. Uh, if anybody's going to figure out how to effectively monetize it, at least according to Mizuho, it's going to be Microsoft. Absolutely. So one quick question mm -hmm. about the return of Sam, Sam Altman. You know, one of the big contingent points between this board and Sam Altman was the use of AI. The board felt like it could potentially be harmful. Sam Altman, th they say that he was not open with them mm. in his communications about it, right? But we have a whole new board. Actually, one person at least is still on the board. but. Co-CEO of Salesforce, the former co-CEO, Brett Taylor, he's leading the board. Former Treasury Secretary Larry Summers is also joining. How does this change the conversation of the board and whether or not they will agree more with Sam Altman? You don't necessarily want a, a board that's totally going to agree. You don't oh, want exactly. rubber stamps. You want some sort of governments, of course, with any business. But what I will say is, you know, all of this is being reported. I haven't talked to any of them, right? So okay, I don't actually okay. know how any of them feel. <laughs> but what I will say, if we go off of sort of the rumor mill and what's been reported, if Sam Altman is back at, at the helm, we know the uh, kind of faction that he represented, which is the growth, growth, growth of mm -hmm. AI. I think we have an idea of the direction of this new board then, which is going to be further growth within this space, further research and development, and then ultimately further potential monetization and use cases for this for Microsoft. So Wells Fargo also overweight 425 on Microsoft. This is just Microsoft's small little, uh, you know, kind of other bets category, if you use sort of the terminology yeah. that Alphabet has. Uh -huh. um, they're going to be fine either way. Oh, they are fine. You know why? Because they're up 57% year to date. So either way, they've been benefiting off of this anyway. Mm -hmm. Alex Coffey, thank you so much for joining us.